Uh, welcome to everyone to this uh, uh, lectures on combinatorics uh, week three. In the previous uh, two lectures, uh, previous two weeks, we looked at uh, uh, pigeonhole principle uh, in the first week and several of its applications. And then uh, we went to uh, look at several basic counting techniques in combinatorics that one can use like uh, you know the addition rule uh, and uh, the product rule and uh, some uh, other uh, interesting results related to this and then uh, we looked at some applications now we are going to look uh, at further applications of these basic techniques to develop a little more advanced uh, uh, tools or, or results that we can use uh, in many situations and uh, that is what we are going to do uh, uh, in uh, in this week's lectures so uh, we start with a very interesting uh, problem okay so it is the following so consider uh, you know the equation uh, summation xi is equal to n or i ranging from 1 to k so x1 plus x2 plus etc xk is equal to n. Now xi's are uh, restricted to be uh, non-negative integers that they can take value 0, 1, 2, etc. Now given this uh, condition, uh, look at any possible solution to this, right? So any so, uh, solution to this uh, equation can be described as a k-tuple something like a1, a2, etc., ak, where ai is the value taken by xi, where xi can be, let's say, 0 or 1, 2, etc., right? So if, uh, if uh, x1 is equal to uh, 5 and x2 is equal to 7, then we will have this tuple starting with 5, comma 7, etc., where i1 is equal to 5, a2 is equal to 7, right? Such a... Uh, uh, tuple is called a weak composition of n into k parts. K parts because, like you know, we are basically writing n as a sum of k non-negative uh, integers. Okay, so this is called a weak composition. Now, before uh, trying to find out, uh, our ultimate aim is to try to count uh, the number of possible weak compositions here. But before that, let us also look at a slightly different uh, uh, definition where we allow xi to be strictly greater than uh, only to be x, uh, strictly greater than zero, that xi cannot be zero. Okay. So if you have an uh, equation exactly uh, the same, right, x1 plus x2 plus x2 xk is equal to n, where uh, xi is strictly greater than zero to be a positive integer, right, xi are positive integers. Then again, any solution given by the ordered tuple a1, a2, etc., a k, where a i belonging to n plus uh, is called a composition of n into k, k parts. So it's not weak composition, it is composition. Okay. So maybe at later point of time, it will be clear why it's called weak and the other one is to be uh, not weak, right? Uh, so, uh, but uh, for the time being, let us just take the definitions for granted. Now, can you think of uh, any uh, any argument uh, to count this uh, uh, this uh, number of possible compositions or number of possible weak compositions? Okay, so I tell you that both of these can be solved by you know some results that we already looked at. Okay, so with this information, can you think about this uh, and find a solution by your own? So maybe uh, you should spend uh, some time, uh, pause this video, spend some time trying to figure out how to count these two things. Okay? It will be very uh, useful if you spend some time thinking about this instead of looking at the solution that we, uh, is presented here. Okay, so here it goes. So we will first uh, try to solve uh, the the second question that is to count the number of compositions of n into k parts. 
Okay, so since we want to make our, uh, uh, you know, the lectures or we want to remember the lectures uh, to be, uh, you know, uh, sweet, uh, let us, uh, let us convert this question into a more, uh, you know, enjoyable form, right, as follows. Okay, suppose we are given, uh, let us say, N, which is greater than or equal to K, uh, let us say, Ladoos. So n ladoos, like you know, identical, you know, same kind of ladoos, maybe, or tiripati ladoos, maybe, you know, one of the most uh, famous ladoos, tastiest. And they are given, and uh, we want to distribute it to, uh, let's say, k children. Okay. So if you think that you are children, then maybe you can hope to get some ladoos, right? Now, <clears throat> so we we have uh, you know uh, enough ladoos so that we don't have to be like you know. Uh, we don't have to be very selective, right? So we can say that every uh, child is going to get at least one ledu. That I will guarantee. Okay, so everybody will get at least one ledu. Then how many ways you can give the ledus to the K children? That is the question, right? Because even though I said that everybody get at least one, I did not say everybody will get equal number of ledus, right? But at least if you get one, you are, you know, you can be happy. So, uh, we will make sure that everybody gets at least one. So, now the question is that, how many ways we can distribute the ledus? Now, one can immediately see that this question is precisely the question of composition, right? Because, uh, you now you can, you can assume the number of uh, ledus received by each of the K children to be the values taken by X size. And uh, they sum to n, and then uh, you know the number of uh, ways to do the distribution is precisely the number of uh, solutions to this previous question of uh, composition of n into k parts, right? Because x is are to be strictly positive. Everybody gets at least one, and it should be integers. So everybody gets at least one. Now, <clears throat> how do you solve this question? Again. Think of ledus if it helps, and try to figure out how to do this yourself. If uh, uh, that doesn't help, uh, we go to the next page. Okay. So <clears throat> let us assume that uh, you know uh, there is a hall where you know the the children are waiting, and then there is a table where all these ledus are kept in a line. Okay. So we have these ledus uh, which are kept in a line. Right, so let's do one, two. I think I took the wrong tool. Uh, let's do, yeah, one, two, three, etc. Right, all the n possible ledos are there. Okay, now uh, this is supposed to be n. So, all possible uh, ledos are there. Now, they are there kept in a straight line. Okay. Now, we want to distribute the ledus to the children, right? So, how do you do? Okay, we will say that, okay, children queue up, right? So, okay, stand in a line. So, the child number one, number two, etc. stands in one line, right? So, they stand in a line and then we will say that, okay, see so the first child can start at the beginning, right? Uh, you know, the first, first person starts at the beginning here or maybe I will even use this. So start here, right? Because you know, we don't want to, we want to use all the ledus, right? So we will say that, okay, you start at this, you know, at the very beginning, the first guy in the queue. Then you start taking some ledus, right? And once uh, you take some ledus, I don't know, one or two or something, right? Uh, some number, whatever, maybe five, depending on, you know, the person who is standing there. Okay, now go, right? So, you know, once he has taken some number of ledus, we will say, okay, now the next guy in the queue comes. Okay, so the three two will start at this place, right? So the children number two, child number two, starts at the position which is, you know, after the first guy is uh, asked to leave. Again, you know, he will take some ledus, and then suddenly the person who controlled uh, the queue says that, okay, you leave next guy. So this way. Each uh, child will be allowed to go and take something. Now, since everybody gets, 
we need to make sure that the you know the last child gets at least one so he he should start uh, you know before the you know the end and then he should be allowed to take whatever is remaining right whatever remains uh, should be given to the uh, last child so that all the n uh, ladoos are distributed to the k children okay. so this way we want to make sure that everybody gets at least one ladoo now how many ways this can be done this is easy because uh, what we have is that we have uh, uh, we have to decide where each of the children uh, you know starts right now the first person doesn't have a choice right so we don't have to look at that because he always starts at the beginning right so therefore we need to only decide the remaining k minus 1 children right 2 to tk where they are going to start now they can only start at some point in between like in this ladoos right they, they so there is there is n ladoos which are kept here let's say 1 2 3 etc n ladoos are kept here and therefore you now the positions where the children can start are in between these ladoos right so if there are n ladoos in a line how many gaps are there in between so there are exactly n minus 1 gaps in between so out of this n minus 1 gaps we need to decide which are the positions where the k minus 1 children are going to start taking the ladoos so once we know that we know the number of ways you can do the distribution and how many are there well since there are uh, n minus 1 gaps available and we need to select k minus 1 of these gaps where the children can start n minus 1 choose k minus 1 possible uh, choices are there right so these are the number of available choices and each choice correspond to a composition and every composition correspond to one of these choices and therefore this is a one to one correspondence and we get that the number of possible compositions of n into k parts is n minus 1 choose k minus 1 or is equal to uh yeah n minus 1 choose k minus 1 right yeah so this is the number of compositions of n into k parts okay so is that uh, is that clear now uh what we are going to do is now to look at the uh, the the first question right what was the first question we want to look at the weak composition right weak compositions are the uh, solutions xi greater than or equal to 0 instead of xi strictly greater than 0 so we found out that the number of compositions is precisely the ways of distributing uh, sweets to children right so we had a great time uh, solving this now we want to solve the other question right so here is a theorem which says that the number of non negative integer solutions to the equation x1 plus x2 plus etc plus xk is equal to n is given by n plus k minus 1 choose n okay now <coughs> how do we uh, prove this right now since we already solved a, a question uh, of uh, you know composition using sweets why don't we try the same thing right maybe we can you know still work with sweets so let us start by assuming that let x1 to xk be the number of ladoos children got when uh, uh n ladoos were distributed to them right see n ladoos so here also we are doing the same thing right we have n ladoos we are going to distribute them to children but now 
you know the the person standing at the queue may not be fair right he will say that okay some children who comes i don't like you right so you don't get anything right this is possible right so you know there is somebody standing there you will say okay first guy come okay you take something second guy take something third guy no you go you don't get anything right then fourth guy so this way uh, we can make some of the access to be zero right so when when the uh, distributor is unfair then this can happen now can you convert this to the previously solved problems any one of the previously solved problems or the previously solved problem just before right if you can convert it to a previously solved question then that is the best thing to do in mathematics right because so, you know you reduce the problem to an already solved problem so if you can do that then we are done right if you can convert into a previously solved problem then that is it so how do you convert it to a previously a previously solved question so again i want you to think about how to convert this to the previous question right so can you convert the unfair distribution to a fair distribution question if you can do that then that is good so you know this this is quite easy actually right because we want to we want to distribute uh you know n sweets to k children so that everybody gets uh, i mean you know when I mean, some some kids may not get anything but now we want to convert into the question that everybody gets at least one now how do you make sure that everybody gets at least one when some of them can clearly be uh zero right so what you do is that you assume that you know from each children before the distribution right you know for each children now we will say we will go to the child and say that okay we are going to distribute some sweets but now since we don't have enough can you please give us one ladu each right so from every child you borrow one ladu right so you 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 take one ladu from each of the children now keep it with you so now you have k extra ladus right so you take the k extra ladus and then put that also in the table now you again send the children back to the queue right now whenever a child comes he will definitely get at least one because you know he gave one ladu to the distributor now you know no, this guy cannot say that okay you don't get anything because he will say that okay i already gave you one ladu i should get at least that one back now what does this mean this means that everybody gets at least one which means that you get x i strictly greater than 0 but now for every uh solution to the you know weak composition or the solution to the distribution where xi can be greater than or equal to 0 we have a solution where xi is greater than or equal to 1 or xi greater than strictly greater than 0 right because you just add one to each of the xis and on the right hand side you have instead of n you have n plus k because we started with k additional to right so therefore distributing n ladus to k children where everybody uh, gets greater than or equal to 0 ladus is equivalent to saying that uh, distributing n plus k sweets to the same k children where everybody gets at least one because whenever you have a solution to at least one you know you you remove one from each of them you have k less ladus right n plus k minus k so then ladus and uh, you know some of them can become zero now because it xi was uh, one it will become zero right so there there is a one to one correspondence between the solution so they they should be the same so that is it so we have already converted it right so we said that okay solutions to xi plus etc xk is equal to n xi greater than equal to 
are in uh, one to one correspondence right with uh, uh, the solutions x1 plus etc xk is equal to n plus k where xi is greater than or equal to 1 or xi strictly greater than 0 right xi greater than or equal to 1 and we know how to do this because we just did in the previous exam right it is basically whatever was that number n plus k minus 1 choose uh, uh, k minus 1 right which is equal to n plus k minus 1 choose n also right by the property of binomial coefficients right so therefore this is what we wanted to prove n plus k minus 1 choose n so we already have the solution right n plus k minus 1 choose n so this is uh, one way we can prove this. Now let me give you another proof okay, to the second, uh, the, the first question, we composed. So the proof two is also quite nice. This is by using one, one another result, right? So what we do is that we observe that, uh, you know, the number of ways to distribute the ladoos to the kids can be made uh, as follows okay so you keep your uh n ladoos here okay so the ladoos are here this one this one this one etc all the n ladoos are kept here now once these ladoos are kept what we are going to do is that uh, you know we separate the ladoos by putting some you know markers or sticks in between them okay so here are the sticks right which separates the ladoos when of course you know these led you know the sticks can be together so that there is no ladoo in between that is also possible right so we keep some bars or k minus one sticks in between to separate the ladoos now, you know, the, the, the sticks, once they are kept, this decides the uh, composition or, you know, the, the distribution of the ladoos because you will say that, okay, the first child can take all the ladoos till the first stick. Okay, if the first stick is in the beginning, then that guy does not get anything, right? So, xi can be 0, x1 can be 0, right? Similarly, you know, after the first tick, so the ledoo is taken, the first tick is removed and then say that again, second child now go, take the ledoo till the first tick again, I mean the second tick, which is the remaining uh, set, the, the first uh, uh, or the next tick, yeah, right, till the next tick, so from this to this. Again, the third child goes and take the ledoo till the third tick, right? so this way, uh, the k minus one children take and the remaining ladoos if there are any because if the stick is at the last end then there is nothing remaining that then so which means that the last guy also may not get anything right so you can you can take right so this is basically you have the ladoos and sticks and then you are arranged you now you put the you know so as i told you some of the sticks can be like this right you can have two sticks like this so that you know the, after the first guy the second guy does not get anything right or maybe like you know there is something like this the last two guys does not get anything right so this is possible but uh, yeah now all we have to do is to find the number of possible arrangements of the ladoos and sticks but this we already know right because we already said that right if you if you have so ladoos are one type right so there are there is n uh, objects of type ledu and then k minus one objects of type stick right so we want to arrange uh, the ledus and sticks 
in any possible way right so how many possible arrangements are there by the multinomial theorem that we studied right if there is a n1 objects of type 1 and n2 objects of type 2 the number of permutations of them is basically n factorial by n1 factorial into n2 factorial so therefore we have n ledus and k minus 1 sticks so n plus k minus 1 total uh, objects are there out of which n of them are of one type and n k minus 1 of them are of different types so therefore n plus k minus 1 factorial divided by n factorial into k minus 1 factorial which is precisely n plus k minus 1 choose k minus 1 or n plus k minus 1 choose n whichever you want right so therefore by the multinomial theorem we immediately get uh, we immediately get that uh, this uh, 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 count or the number of possible arrangements or the number of weak compositions is equal to n plus k minus 1 choose k minus 1. So that is it. So we have another proof. Okay. Now here are some uh, homework questions for you. First is that you count the number of compositions of n if any number of parts are allowed okay so what do you, what do i mean by that so earlier we said that we have a fixed number of k parts are there right so for, we counted for precisely k now you want to find out uh, for arbitrary number of you know where k is arbitrary right it can be 1 it can be 2 it can be 3 etc right now uh, can you find a close formula for this right now close formula is a formula without the summation sign so i don't want you know because you can always write you know summation k is equal to 1 2 blah 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 uh, n plus k minus 1 choose uh, i mean uh, what is that n minus 1 choose k minus 1 or something like that right so this is very easy to write because we already know for any fixed k you can always write a summation formula like this but we don't want that summation form we want a closed form where you now you find the formula without using the summation right? so you basically do the summation and give me the formula or find another way to uh, find it directly so whichever way you want you can do it and the second part of the question is that what difference it makes if we allow the composition to be weak composition okay so i in the first part we are saying that Okay, count the number of compositions of n you find the close formula now the second question is that what difference makes to this close formula if uh, we allow the uh, v composition uh, instead of the composition 